Okay, this is one of those videos where I'm going to drop all kinds of stuff that I probably shouldn't. And you know what? This is gold. So if you stumble across this video, you are going to get an inside look into what it really takes to create a point perspective. I have a recording that I have with a bunch of my students. I do teach and I do coach and I do consult. So if you're a designer, you're a landscaper, you got a kind of business, or if you're a DIYer, a homeowner who maybe can't afford a design and you want to know how to do it yourself, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. This is the gold. So I'm probably taking revenue away from myself, but you know what? I want to give this information out to you. If you want to learn how to do it, here you go. So we're going to have a ranch style home. I'm going to give out tons of tips and I'm also going to drop some serious haymaker dad jokes. I can't help myself when I'm teaching with my students. I get all kinds of lit up. This is raw, unedited, and you're going to see exactly how it is on my other business side. But at the same time, you're going to get a great, great design with lots and lots of tips and you're going to learn how to do a point perspective yourself. So enjoy. And if you want to speed it up, just watch it at like 3x speed so you can see all the stuff. If you want to hone in on a certain section of the video to learn a skill, then you slow it down. But that's how I would watch this video because it's probably going to be like an hour. Enjoy. Training time. Uh, love the talks. These are, I get so jujued up. You wouldn't think, but I've been up since 3 a.m. and I just get jacked on these things. This is like better than an energy drink for me. So I just, I love every minute of it. Let's get in there. We're going to go into real time. And I have implemented a photo. Can everybody see the photo? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Super cake design here. But I'm going to show you just a couple little tricks that have helped me with the point perspective that maybe real time doesn't really have any tutorials on, right? And the main things that start out with these is how do you Photoshop stuff out so that it looks pretty darn good and then you can paint the canvas, right? So right here, we've got this guy and maybe I wanna see everything. If I wanted to photo out this tree, you could do this with some of the techniques I'm going to show you. We're just going to clean up this gutter line. You see how this tree branch is going down over this? I'm going to show you how I'm going to clean this up. Believe it or not, this entire house, you see this branch coming down right here? It was covered in trees, and I've already done all that because I was not going to bore you with 20 minutes of Photoshopping. It didn't take that long. But I'm going to show you the tricks I do for this guy over here, and then we're going to get into the landscaping. And I'm going to show you a couple tools in here to make it really, really easy. So what you do is you go into settings, you go into background picture, you say edit using the picture editor, okay? It's gonna take you into another window. Then under show options, this is highlighted. You see this little box up here, replace current selection. That is the first thing I will do and I will do as much of that and then I go over to the clone tool. So let me show you what this tool does. I'm gonna zip in. And you guys can't see it, but you guys are kind of on my screen. So I'm going to be like clicking around and trying to move you out of the way. I don't know if you could see anything of what I'm doing, but it might take me a minute or two to find a spot. Just so I can see. All right, good. That worked, actually. OK, so I'm on replace current selection. And I want to go up and I want to make this look like gutter. So what you do is let's grab a section of gutter that doesn't have any leaves and you're left clicking and you're dragging over till about there, and then it's highlighted this. Now what you're gonna do is you're going to copy and paste, and it's gonna grab that section you just did. Now I can take this over and I can line it up best I can, right? It's not gonna be perfect sometimes. And you can even drag it over just a little bit, but then it's gonna start to dilute the brick but from a distance, you can't really tell. I wouldn't dilute it too much, but you could do a little. And I'm going to apply. All of a sudden, we kind of got that section out. I'm just going to paste again. I'm going to grab that same selection. But uh-oh, house ended right there. Obviously, I'm not going to pull brick out past the house. Now, I could put this right here, and I could grab some of this with the clone and get rid of that, but I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to make my life easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip in just a little bit more. And I'm going to try and grab another section that doesn't have any of that stuff in the way. So I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to copy and paste. And now I'm getting rid of that gutter line. As you can see, it's not perfect. But the client doesn't know that. It's very close. And then boom, all of a sudden, I've kind of gotten rid of that part. Now I want to get rid of this section right here. 
See, it's a little darker over here because of the shadow of the tree versus lighter over here. I think we'd be better off grabbing this section. So I could just copy from here and go over, but then I'm grabbing a part of this house, which will look kind of goofy. So I'm gonna just take some of the meat right here with no leaves. I'm gonna copy and paste. And I'm gonna bring this guy over and I'm gonna start to try and get rid of some of this. Let's apply, let's paste again. We can apply, we'll do a couple more. And then I'm gonna show you how to use the clone tool to clean up some of this stuff and just make it look a little bit more cohesive. Apply. Okay, so now we kind of got our gutter line. That stuff's out of the way, but you see there's a little bit of a green hue there, a little bit right here, it's a little off. So what we do is we can go into the clone tool and this is the size of your brush right here. So if I put this at 72, it's pretty darn monstrous right now. But if I bring this guy down to, let's say, I don't know, just go to nine much smaller, much more manageable. If you right click wherever this guy is, is what it is going to copy. So if, for instance, let's grab some sky, right click there. If I left click on here, what do you think is gonna get painted? Wherever I drag this thing, it's copying the sky right now, okay? It's copying this, it's copying that. That's how that works. Oh, shit, that's cool. You, you haven't, okay, all right, there's an aha moment. So I'm gonna undo that, we don't want that but I am gonna grab from the shadowed brick area and I can start to paint this in a little bit. I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna go back and forth like I was grabbing brick and I want it horizontal. This is just one of those little details. So if I go like this, all of a sudden, it starts to clean up that kind of green that's there and starts to take out even those parts where we just sort of pasted. It makes it look a little bit more natural. I can go along that tree line. I can make this brush smaller if I want. I can do all kinds of things, but that is starting to clean up. Now, here's something that you can do. I could go back to the, the uh, tool where I'm cutting and then I'm pasting, but it's going to grab this house out here. So what I'm going to do is just zip in a little bit more. And I got to move you guys around a little bit. There you are. You're over there now. Okay. And now I got to move you again. Pain in the butt. There it is. Okay. Now I am going to right click on this. See where there's this like brush and tree? You know that tree's off and it just, I'm going to right click there. And then I'm going to make sure I get it lined up as much as I possibly can. Because what I want to do is I want to create that edge. And I am copying that edge to get out that, now I started to hit driveway. So I can actually take some of this tree and I could start to kind of photo this out and just make it blend in like it would with the rest. And I'm trying to match the lines, as you see. So I'm kind of copying the lines, right? Taking a little bit of a line here, bringing it over. There you go. You can get as detailed as you want, guys. And then when you zip out from a distance, all of a sudden that tree branch is gone, okay? So that's how you do it. Those are your two main tools that you're gonna to do to get this picture where you want. You're gonna go into file, you're gonna save it. You say yes, then you click out. You save it, click on the X. Then when you click this okay, watch over here. Okay, bye bye time, okay? That's how you're gonna Photoshop and you're gonna get these things clean, all right? Say there was a bunch of leaves in front of this window right here, like you could not see the window at all. What you could do is if you could see this window, you would go back in there and you would clone this window, copy and paste it right on there. And boom, you put that window on. You can grab pieces of house to get rid of stuff. Okay, that's how I do it. So there you go. We got a pretty clean palette here. Now what we want to do is create. And a lot of the times when we're creating, it's out of a conversation we have with the client, isn't it? This is about as bare bones as possible. What you cannot see because this house is so high perched up, like literally I'm standing on my truck bed. It is like a cliff. So this is, this is about as good as it was going to get. And the client understands that. But there is a section in front of this sidewalk of about three, four feet before a little planter box that we're going to put in. So you got about six feet actually from this point back. And I'm gonna try and represent that with some layering of planting. And I'm planting the seed right now because you're gonna see what I do later. So right now I wanna cover up this foundation. We talked about that. 
I'm going to put a little wall in here and I'm going to put a wall here representing a planter. And then the sidewalk combs along here and there's a little bit of space here. So we've got some planter planting that we're going to do, retaining walls, and then we're going to do a little bit of landscaping here and here. And that's all for this one. Some are more complex. Some you're doing on a hillside, some you're doing walls, whatever. But I wanted you to just understand a couple principles. So let's go in retaining wall. We got an earth tone colored house, right? So I'm going to go over to an earth tone retaining wall. Let's go into Unilock. Let's go down to walls and let's pick something that we feel is going to be a, a decent match. I feel like one of these is actually going to flow pretty well. I'll go with this little darker one, it's just something I'm going to pick. There's no particular reason outside of it's going to represent the color. When you get in with your clients, you're going to talk about different pricing options. Some block is cheaper than others, all that stuff. You guys know this stuff, but we want to visually just show them the wow factor. So let's go across here, just like we we're planting and putting in a retaining wall to cover up some of this foundation. And what I did is I left clicked and then I right clicked and I let go. So now you see, obviously, we got a heck of a height thing going on here. So I'm going to drop this down. And unfortunately, this humongous bullnose goofiness is something you cannot get away from inside of uh, the point perspective. So what I do a lot of the times when it's faded and it's far away, I just get rid of it so they can't even see it. So I get rid of it. And then the size of the actual blocks and all the measurement, like everything over here, you can start to manipulate. So I would say this is probably going to be three levels high. So there's three levels. It's at one foot on this. I'm going to drop this guy down. Like if it was going across, that actually seemed a little high to me, guys. I'm going to bring this down to four, see where that's at. That looks better. And I'm going to bring this over. Now, from this angle, it's just going to look straight on. But if I was on a 45, I would probably do a return angle and make it's so you could see it cutting back into the hillside or going back into the foundation. On this particular example, it's just going to be a plop right there and the client's going to get it pretty easy. So what you can do instead of recreating this wall, you can just command C, command B, copy and paste. You can bring this guy over to here, okay? And I am going to put this guy right on this line. I'm going to edit my points. And the tricky part is it's starting to become a little bit, you see this depth that's going on here? There's a couple of things I could do with that. But the width part right here, you can manipulate that, can't you? So I can actually completely take that out of the equation. Same with this guy over here, completely take it out. It actually is going to serve us better here for showing this planter based on this angle, okay? So you're a little bit of an artist going on here, but it's not as complicated as I'm making it. As you get in here and you start doing more of these things, it gets easier. So that's really all we have to do here because the sidewalk is going along here. There's a little bed here, like a three foot bed. And then there's a bed that goes over to here. And I only know this because I was on the property, right? Over here, it's just grass and there's no need to put a bed because the hill is super, super steep and it's gonna be goofy. But I do wanna represent if there was mulch there. So here's how I'm going to do it. Let's just paint in front of the garage just to show a little pop of color. You go into region, and this is where you get to select all your fill materials, your grass, your stone, your mulch. We're going to do some mulch. I'm going to go with the brown. I like this 38. I like a darker mulch. It's just me. You could do lighter. You could do black. You can do whatever you want. Click OK. So now we're going to start to paint that picture. We're going to show if somebody had never been in this house that there is a bed in front of there. And then when we put plants, it'll make a lot of sense. But we always start with our hardscape and then we start to get in our fill. So I'm going to really zip in here and I'm going to make sure it's straight. This is a curve. This is a straight line. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to snap a little bit of something right there. And I'm going to pull it over to the tree. And I'm going to cut it up the tree just a little bitty bit and connect that line. Then all of a sudden, from afar, you can kind of tell something's going on there, right? There's a little bit of a bed. We're going to do the same effect over here. I'm going to take region. And I'm going to go right along here. And I'm going to pull that all the way over to a little bit of an angle. 
So it's kind of showing this popping out and then I can manipulate and, and, and tweak my retaining wall. I don't have to do that right this minute. Cut it back. And then I'm gonna connect that line all the way over. I'm just gonna put it up here. When you're right on top, it'll just connect it. So I'm gonna put it up here, and connect this, but now I'm gonna tweak it. You go to edit points. Now I can bring that down. And you see how just that little bitty bit is showing that there's gonna be a bed there from afar, kind of along the horizon. We could do the same thing over here. You know what, maybe I will. This hill, I got about four feet of flat before it dives off. I'm gonna represent it. I think it's gonna add more value to the design. It's gonna look cooler and uh, opportunity for a little bit of an upsell as well. If they wanna do this bed, all of a sudden I just created an opportunity for maybe another thousand bucks, right? Paint the picture guys. All They can say no or they could say yes, right? So we're gonna bring this back. We're gonna connect these points. And there you go. And one thing I'll show you, I'll zip in really, really quick, is you can, you can work with the perspective part. You can bring it up, you can bring it back. From a distance, you're not gonna see any of this. But the point is you can make the mulch bigger, you can make it smaller, you can do all kinds of things. You're not gonna see any of this from, from the street. So I'm just gonna paint the line and then boom, we're in there. Okay. Looking pretty decent. If I wanted to get nitpicky, I would go fix this wall, which I'm gonna do, because I am picky. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna say edit points, and I'm gonna bring this. And you know what? If I were to do a return angle on this because of where the angle is, I can insert a point, but it may not work. And I will show you why in a minute. So let me bring this back. And if I wanted to show that cutting back along something, you see how it's kind of going up? All you got to do is actually move this. Let's go down to two. Too much. Let's go to three. There you go. And then all of a sudden, we're kind of showing a return angle going back. And that also allows us to create more depth in this design. Let's do it over here. And I'll, it'll make sense in about two seconds. I'm going to edit and insert another point. I'm going to bring this guy over. Almost like we're doing kind of a trapezoid. It's one of these weird angles. I'm going to make this a three as well, because we're going to learn from the other one, see if that works. And just put a little bit of depth. Might not need it on this angle. I'm actually just going to leave it be. It looks off. And that's OK. You know, you play around with this stuff sometimes. Oh, I can't see the thing, because <laughs> you guys are hanging out right there. OK, now I got to move this. All right. so. Let's go back and let's see where we're at. Sorry, I'm floating you guys around. How do I make this smaller? There we go. Oh my God, I just did something awesome. I can't see you guys, but you're out of the way there. Okay, so now what we want to do, we painted those two beds in the front. Let's paint the planters so that you obviously can tell that there's something there. We're going to use the region again. If you want to do stone or gravel, let's just show what that would be. I'm going to change it over to mulch. I'm not big on stone personally, but um, there's a time and a place and there's reasons, but I like that softer and more natural look. So let's say we wanted to go with like a pea gravel look um, or like a multicolored look. This 260 always works. Iowa rainbow rock is something we have in St. Louis. 260 is a good one. Jack, little tip for you. Tony, little tip for you. That's the one I use. Um, let's show what it would be like to have this bed filled in with that rock. So as you can see, it's really got this trans, this perspective thing going. I can move it up and make it a little smaller. That might look better from a distance. Truth is, I think I can bring it down just a little bit. You can kind of see it. This is from very far, guys. So <laughs> there's a lot of detail. It's just not going to be seen. But we're starting to pr produce depth with this design. So let's go in here. We're going to do the same thing over here. Let's just keep it as a rock for the heck of it. Unless you guys are like, dude, I hate rock, kind of like me. We'll turn it to mulch. And I want to take this all the way over, which means I'm going to bring my wall over a little bit. I feel like that's a mistake going on. 
So I'm going to go to perspective and just bring it up a little bit and then drop this down just a little bitty bit. All right, let's go in here and bring that wall over just a smidge. Dude, I just sounded like my grandma. She said smidge all the time. Dad jokes, grandma jokes, anybody up for some? Come on, guys, just freaking humor me. I'm painting here. I'm Bob Ross and my best self. All right, here we go. All right, that's pretty cool. So now we got a little bit of depth. We got some retaining walls. That's good. Let's change it over to mulch. So I don't like it. I, I just don't like it, guys. We're not doing it. All right, mulch, 38, boom. Yeah, a little bit more cohesive. Okay, cool. All right, beautiful. So now after we've got a little bit of hardscaping, got a little hey, bit Bobby, of Yes, please. Real quick, if you yeah. would have selected the stone mix and hit L, it would have selected the other one and you would have been able to change both of them at the same time. See, these freaking graphic designer know-it-alls. I swear, No, that's a great tip, man. I love it. Is that from Photoshop? Is that like a Photoshop trick? No, it's on, it's on the tutorials. Oh, dude, I need to watch those things better then. Dude, great tip. Yes, please. If you guys know so, tips. So if you guys have like a whole bunch of beds, instead of changing each one, if you yeah. select them. So if you select select one of them, then hit L. Oh, so damn. You know, selecting everything that's the similar. Dude, see? Just right there. I love these group calls, man. I'm always learning something. It, it, at the same time, that's beautiful. I have uh, one of my other students in another group. He used to be a graphic designer. And man, he knows all of these shortcuts in the 3D like you cannot believe. And he he's teaching me stuff. You know, it's just that's what happens in these, which is really cool. Good tip, man. L. Okay, we're going to remember that. And you're probably going to give me another tip here because if we're doing some of the same plantings and I want to just cut and paste real fast, I'm I know there's a way to do it, and I'm not very good at that either. So we're going to go into plant. All right, we're going to start and hold control. What do you do? You so select the one you want before mm -hmm. you enter the first one. Hold control. Okay. All right. Good to know. Good tip. So here's one thing I actually want to I want to slow down and tell you guys. I like to put layers in my design because I like to show different points of the design so the client can really see how the vision is coming to light. I do it in 3D and I do it in perspective. What I could have done at the very beginning of this is before we did any of the retaining walls, any of the landscaping, I could have just said like before and had the house and then shown the next phase. I could have said retaining walls. I could have said beds, whatever. We're just going to, we're just going to say uh, beds for this one. That's what we're going to call this layer. Now what I want to do is I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to call it plants. Okay. So now we're going to show them. All right. Here's with the plants. The other good part about this is when you go in to do edits, if you do, you can just go right to the plant part and do that. And it just, you're trying to make it less complex for sure. Okay. So this client absolutely left me with nothing. They just said, make it look good. So this is just one of those things. I'm like, okay, I want to make it look good, but that's not always what that means. Here's a little kind of feeling out your client tip. When you're talking to them and they are already tight, tight, tight on something, and then they say, hey, what do you think about the front? If we have any chance of getting this work for the front, I sure as hell, I'm not going to just flood it with plants. I'm going to make it look beautiful, but as cost effective as possible and see if there's an opportunity that they can go with that and they can always add on later. So that's the kind of style I'm going to go with here. I'm going to plant some bushes up in here and leave room if they wanted to do some flocks that could creep over here. I'll show that as an add-on. Um, and then maybe I do a little bit of height on the corners here and do some bushes up in the front. All of these can be line items in the proposal that I can show and then they can select what they want. Don't ever assume that you know their budget, but at the same time, start with a benchmark is what I would say. Maybe I know 4,000 is probably the start of this, but it could go up to eight with lighting and all that, right? So we're going to show that. So let's go in and let's start with the planters and let's just start with those kind of meat and potatoes that I like to say. And I'm going to go with something that I know is going to do decent in the shade. They got no deer going on and I want to put a little color. So I'm going to go with a hydrangea because I know it's going to look good. I'm going to do an endless summer, kind of this blue. I could go the blue, pink, whatever. That's what I'm going to use. I'm going to grab this bad boy. I'm going to squeeze it in and I'm going to put it at, say, half maturity. 
Yeah, probably about maturity there. And I'm gonna put this, and the reason I also like this is I'm showing that it's not gonna get above the windows, but it's gonna fill in that space pretty nice. So there's one, let's just space it out nice and we're not gonna crowd the living heck out of it. Two, and if I wanted to make this one look a little different, I can go into flipping horizontal and boom, turn it and it'll flip this guy and put the flowers in the other end just to break it up, makes it look more natural, okay? And obviously, if you're making something kind of go off in the distance, you can squeeze it, and make it look smaller. Things in the forefront are going to be bigger than obviously in the back, right? We want to paint that picture so what it looks like in real life. All right, looks pretty decent. Let's just do the same thing over here, except there's going to be a couple more over here. We're probably going to have four, maybe five. Actually, I'm going to do something a little different, aren't I? You know that. I'm not going to just settle for that. I'm going to put this in. We'll go two and two, just like Chuck. Tony, only guy on this whole call that probably gets that joke, maybe. Tony, you there? <laughs> did he I'm, I'm, here, but I, I'm here, but I did not get your joke. I said two and two, just like Chuck. Love connection, man. Back in the day. Come on. Oh, two and Stay two. Stay with me. Chuck oh, I God. know. Like I said, us old farts. I'm 41, guys. I'm probably – Tony, you're a little older than me, right? I'm a little older than you, okay. yeah. So he definitely gets it if I get it. When you don't have money, guys, you rent movies at Blockbuster Video and you watch Love Connection at your dad's apartment. That's what we did. So there you go. Love and life. Okay. I want to put a little height in here, but here's the thing. I know that bed is not completely deep. So what could I put in there that would add a little height and then work in kind of the shade. This is knowing a little bit about your plants, but I know not everybody likes these. I know an arborvitae is going to do the job here. And I think it's going to look pretty cool. And I'm also have a plan for an arborvitae on the other side. So I'm going to grab this guy. And this is just something to bring a little height, a little ambiance, a little bit of something that's going to fill all this dead space versus just doing hydrangea, hydrangea, hydrangea. They want something a little different. I'm going to bring it but I got to think about the root system as well. And that will be able to survive and do well there. So then I'm going to take it and I'm going to balance it out over here. Get a little bit bigger because it's going to be in the forefront. And I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to drop another one over here. I'm going to squeeze it down a little bit because it's a little bit off in the distance. Okay, so I got a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Now, I want to break up this line of sight. I added this bed and I added this bed for a reason. So let's put something in there. I want to get a little bit of color and I know that the sun's going to start to break a little bit on there. So I'm going to go with one of my go-tos. I'm going to go with the Wajila Wine and Rose. It's got that burgundy color, sunshade, it'll do fine. And it's going to break up this line of sight. So I'm going to squeeze this guy down. I'm going to start to drop him in and create something pretty cool for these peeps. So we're going to go here. It's breaking up the wall, which I also like. We got one, got two, and you know what? I may do something different in here because I don't want to put one in front of here and then kind of break up this. It's almost like I'm sharing the focal point in a way. So I'm going to do something a little different. This is just kind of Bob Ross in it, guys, on the fly. I do this a lot. I just, I don't always have a plan. It just kind of come to. There's, what is it, happy little mistakes, happy little whatever, you know? Be you, do your thing. All right, so there we go. I think that's kind of cool. And I'm gonna drop in one here, and I'm gonna drop in one over here. Now, I wanna show you a little trick. This guy would be about here. This tree, all of a sudden, is actually in the way. You see how a little bit of this is in front of this tree? Are they gonna see it? Probably not. But you're going to have instances on point perspective where you will, you go to mask and you start to just go with the outline of the tree. I could do a little curve line if I want. And I'm going to go in front of this tree and get rid of all that and then connect it. And boom, now it's behind the tree. Okay, so that's how you do that. So now let's add a couple finishing touches to this. I want to put something in here, and I wanna put something, whatever I put in here, I'm gonna balance it out over here as well. Could I drop another one of these guys right here and represent that? I could, but I think I could do a little better. 
I got a little bit of depth in this bed. I want to do a cool little tree over here. And then I want to do something, whatever that tree is, whatever that color is, I'm going to pull that color over here. So let's start with the tree. Got something in mind called the Korean lilac that I like. And it's kind of one of those spear trees right here. It's a good little one. It's not going to get too crazy on me. I'm going to drop it in. They only get to about six feet. You could do a limelight hydrangea tree. There's, there's options, you know. Um, but I'm going to show it on center and I'm going to take that shadow off because I don't want it on the tree. Now, of course, I'm masking, but I'm just going to take that off and I'm going to show it peeking out behind this. And I'm just going to have to explain to the client what this is. And I could do that by when I set up my Google folder that's got the before and the afters of this design, I could show a Korean lilac in real life as a picture. And I could do a loom video, which is one of the biggest tips that I want you to take away from this entire session. It's something, something called Loom. It's L-O-O-M. I love it because it is free. You get a certain amount of uh, videos. You can go to a, like a $10 or $50 a year package. But what it is essentially is it will record you and it puts you in a little circle down on the screen and you can walk your client through the designs and go through your thought process and the conversation you had and you make a custom video for them. You share the link with them, you put it in your email, and then they get to watch that and go through the design. You don't have to explain it in an email. You can literally talk it out to them and it converts like crazy. It is like one of those extra hooks that you can do with your client to give a custom impact. A lot of people don't do stuff like that. I make a video for every single design that I put out, every single proposal I put out, because I actually want to let them know how excited I am and how much I care. It's another point of contact. L-O-O-M, Loom, grab it. I'm telling you, it is a game changer. All right, we're gonna go to mask and we're gonna take this guy out. I'm gonna go along the tree, bring it down, and I'm just gonna get this guy out of here. So this is the mask tool, and then boom. And it's kind of peeking out, you know? Client's probably like, hey, what is that? And if I really want to show, if I want to cheat, that's on center, but I want to show them that it's a tree, I could bring it over just a little bit so that they can see the trunk, you know? Just, just okay, I, I know what that is now. All right, so now we got a little bit of green going on there. We got this over here. I want to balance it out. I'm going to put something right here and right here. And then I'm going to do one more touch. And all this is just coming to my mind as I'm doing it. Like I said, they kind of gave me free reign. I've done a lot of designs. So I got a couple of things that I always seem to do well, like with selling jobs. So like I've, I've figured out what works, right? So I want, to, I want to create a little bit. You know what? This is one of those opportunities that I want to break it up a little bit. I'm going to grab some lavender so I can get a little bit of texture and height going on versus everything so cookie cutter. And these are cheap, you know, these are like $22 per, and they're going to get really, really big like this. So I'm going to represent that. And I'm going to put this guy here next to this. And then I'm going to put this guy over here like that. And I think that looks pretty darn cool, guys. You know, starting to look good, starting to look like something easy to install. Any crew can install this. This is going to sell the job instantly. We got a couple more touches. If I really want to go for the jugular, there's two things I could do. I could stage a planter up here and up here to show how it frames the door, which I'm gonna show you. And I could show how something creeping over a section of the wall, like some flocks, would really make it pop. So why not? Let's just do it. I'm gonna go in here, you go into search, type in flocks. I'll grab up some flocks. There's some. And I'm gonna shrink it down because we know that flocks is, is not that big and it takes quite a few of them. I want it to look real. And let me zip in. And I'm going to stage this almost like it's kind of creeping over the corner. I'm going to take the shadow off. I feel like it's kind of taken away. Also, when you have imperfections in your retaining walls and you need to hide something, throw some flocks in. You know what I mean? And then you're kind of fixing something that you just maybe you can't get the angle right or whatever it is. But all of a sudden, you got another tool in your arsenal that you can use to help sell a job so that it looks good. All right, so we got a little flocks on there. I wish I was listening when Aaron told me something, but I'm gonna copy and paste all of these the way I do it, which is bad, it's not working. 
<laughs> Hold on, I'm trying really hard. I'm going to copy as many as I can. All right, copy and paste. Eh, I got four out of five. Bat like 800. I'm batting 800. I, I'll take it. That's cool, man. That's good enough. All right. Can you tell you used to play baseball? All right, here we go. I'm going to put this guy in. That's pretty cool. All right, got a little bit there, a little bit there. Might be a little over top, I know, but I want to show you guys stuff. I may just take this out if I was if I was sending this off. I don't know. I like it. If it's winter, I'm not going to show this. Or I can just say springtime in the proposal, and it's a reason to come back and maybe do a little bit more work for the people. All right, let's do a couple more over here. Then I'm going to show you how I do a pot. And then we are going to wrap this up with some landscape lighting. Everybody hanging in there okay? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You're off screen, so I can't tell if you're picking your nose or just sleeping or whatever. So, you know, be you. All right, cool. There we go. By the way, I'm a dad. So when I tell bad jokes, it's because I'm a dad. It's dad joke time. All right, cool. Accessories. We're going to go into planters, okay? They got lots of really cool pots in here. I love them. Um, I got a couple that I like better than others, but this is one. I don't know why. Planter 54, I love that one. And then down at the bottom, I love this green one, Planter 106. And what's really cool is when you're doing a, a side yard and uh, maybe you've got all this really beautiful kind of perennial vibe going on, like a flowy thing, and then boom, you put a pot in there as the focal point. This is one of my go-tos right there. Just, just dropping it in there for you. Okay, so we got this guy. What I want to do is, of course, I'm going to scale it because it's monstrous, and you can just go in and out this way. You can click off this. You can adjust numbers. You can do whatever. And I like to tip it just a little bit so it kind of shows the inside. And I'm going to shrink this guy down. And the tricky part is they got this goofy handrail. So there are ways around this. Um, what I could do is I could literally paint like bars on here if I wanted to. Um, or I could use the mask tool, which is what I typically do. Because this is actually on the inside of these bars. So what I do is I take the mask tool. And if I was like painting bars... I would just imaginary grab what's there. And this will make sense in a minute. Let me insert a point. Okay. And it's almost like I'm, I'm putting it behind here. So let's do one. I'm going to copy paste. Do another. Copy paste. These are just little tricks that I, I do to make it look as real as possible. Is this one making sense to you guys? Maybe, yep. maybe not. Okay. Sometimes I could see the bars and then I just copy them. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm, I'm basically imagining them right now. Okay. So if that was an example, there you go. And let's do a plant and uh, it's not like it's going to do well in the shade. I'll, let's do some ferns. Fern will be cool. And I like this foxtail fern. I'm going to zip this guy down. And if I do B, it'll go back behind whatever I masked, and the planter. So there you go. And I'm gonna take the cast, the shadow off. And from a distance, that's probably gonna look pretty darn close. Pretty darn cool. There you go, what do you think? Not too bad, huh? So let's do the same thing over here. Copy, paste. Let's grab our fake bars. Copy and paste. I'm going to zip in, make it a little easier. All right, got that. We're almost there, guys. Show you the lighting. And then be on the home stretch, pretty much there. 
All right, let's grab this fern, copy and paste. There we go. Well, I thought I copied and paste. There we go. And I'm going to B for back. It'll go back behind whatever. There you go. I'm going to flip it so it doesn't look like the other one. Shrink it down just a little bit, make it a little bit different. Okay. I think we got something pretty cool. What do you guys think? Not too bad, right? Not too good. It's a lot better. So let's add some lighting to this guy. So what you do is you go to night. Click on night. It turns it dark. Doesn't make it completely dark, but it's, it's good enough. Click on lights. Then you have all these lighting options over here, okay? Ones I typically go to is under Kitchler. And I like this one right here, the straight up and down one. I'm going to click OK. Now, you see that it's going down this way. Going to Z, you can flip it around. And then you can also manipulate the size of the light. So I'm going to make that pretty darn small. So we're way off in the distance on this guy. And I'm going to start to spotlight things. This tree would be something that I'd want to spotlight. So I'm going to turn down. You can turn up or down the brightness. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to bring it in just a little bit like you would normally do, right? There's one on there. I'm going to turn that just a little bit more. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to represent it pretty well. And then all of a sudden you're going to be pricing this out to your clientele as well. They're like, hey, if you'd like lighting, you're charging 200 a light, 250 for the wire and the transformer. Here's an extra 2K. And then they see this and they're like, Light up your investment. Absolutely. Boom. Just made some more money. Happens all the time. So here we go. We're going to show this guy. And then I'm going to do my best to show this tree, right? If I say B, I notice that it actually spotlights trees really well. So I like to do that. And now it's behind even my mask. So I don't even have to do anything there. So there's another one. And then I can go back into lights. And by the way, if I wanted to like, say put lights on the house, I would just grab the light and I could put it up on the corner of the house, put B to make it back as far as possible. There you go, now it's behind the hydrangea and I can tone down the wattage and I can make this go up all the way to the top. Like if I was accenting the sides, which I do a lot of times. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. And I'm going to bring it in over here as well. B to go back behind the hydrangea. There it is. And it just kind of shows a little bit more ambiance. All right, going to light. Let's get some pathway lights in there. I usually use this guy right down here. These little mushroom looking ones. I don't know. Seem to do well. You can do bronze. You can do black. You can do whatever. And you can make it whatever size you want, okay? So I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to get this to what the size of a light really would be, which is about 16 to 18 inches, which is probably about the height of the wall. Then I can address the wattage if I want. I can bring this up so that it's illuminating that. I can make it thinner if I want. But I think that's probably about right. So I got that guy. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to bring him over here. And I'm going to bring the size up a little. It looks like it's shining on the grass for some reason. So I want to tweak it a little bit. And then let's just light up along here. You can go as crazy as you want with lights. I'm going to put a couple over here. You could even put under cap lights on the retaining wall, guys. I mean, it's literally completely up to you. To me, this feels like way too many freaking lights. So I'm going to actually get rid of these two in the middle. I could put probably one there, but you get the idea. And then maybe we just show one more down here on the corner just to show it. And there we go. All those YouTube videos, if you've ever seen the other channel I have, this is what I'm doing and I'm copying my screen. So you got the before, after, and at night, right there. Boom shakalaka. And all you do is you go into file, you go to save. I already named it. And then when you want to export, it's going to export the exact image that you have up. So it's going to export the night vision right now. So what I would do, is I would go to file, export file. I would name it after the client. And I would say after, and you, you can name them however you want. 
after, and I would type night, because this is what I'm going to share with them. I say save. I say OK. And you know, you just click no after this. Would you like to open the exporter? You don't need to do that. So this exported actually over to my, my uh, downloads. So now I want to do a daytime. I go file, export to file, name it after my client. And I call this just after. This is, day. I could say day, whatever. And now I've got both of those images ready to fire off to the client, okay? So that is how you do point perspective. So there it is. If you want to learn how to sell these designs on appointments, like walk away from design appointments with money, that is what I am absolutely awesome at. And I would love to teach you. That is why I built that other business, how to sell, how to market, how to walk away with money, how to grow and scale your landscaping company. You go to the seven figure landscaper. That's where that is. And if you obviously are a homeowner and you got value out of this, smash the like button. I was happy to show you how to do this. Hopefully I saved you some time and money and you got some great ideas and inspiration. This is Bobby K saying creation is everything. So go out and create. I'll see you on the next video.